So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my misadventures of me playing online for Blaze Blue. Anyways, here um you remember part three of my crash and part three and four of my crash and spiral and redub. Well, I got a redub D dub. Okay, that didn't make sense, but I had to do it twice this time. It might be the same. It's gonna be the same thing, but I brought someone new, and I had to. I explain later why part three and four were removed. It's really stupid why they got removed, but I tell you why. Anyways, here's my guest. Hey. Um. Uh, yeah. It's um. I trip five here, and we're doing the uh, rant, aren't we? Um. Sly. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um. I know this guy. He was at the marathon. He's been looking at my videos. It's good to get someone else here that knows what they're talking about. Anyways, we're going to go into crash now. You saw the rant. I. Uh, you saw the first two parts. Let's just reiterate real quickly. Why do you, why are radical games not selling well? Why are they not selling well? Yeah, well, um, they suck. <laughs> now we're gonna we, we're not just gonna say they suck fully. We will say they suck, but we're gonna have an example. Example. I mean, an explanation, not an example. And an explanation one. Um, they suck because they they don't. Their the product like the the game itself doesn't draw people in. Like there's two things that make a game sell well: media support and it being good, being fun. It had media support. It had a lot of media support, right? Yeah. Um. Like you know, there's advertisements here. You see, um, every single pretty much advertisement on the um, you know, the TV. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of advertising for that um, Crash of the Titans. There's a whole lot. Um, if you compare it to like another game, um, let's just let's pick a game out of the hat. Sly. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah. Um, you don't really see ads for that, but things like Crash of the Titans. Um, uh, but Crash you. Bit. And the funny thing was, Beyond the Good and Evil was an excellent game, but never got no media support. Yeah. Well, um, games that don't get media support, um, like such as and stuff, um, don't usually be bestsellers. Um, Crash of the Titans was in like all the kids magazines and stuff. Um, over here we have um, K Zone. He's like all over that and stuff like that. It was um, advertised to death. Yeah, like. And but the game, you see, when you get that much advertising, you got a little to the hype. Pretty much, Radical had a lot of hype going into this, and they dropped the ball. Like they slipped up and just fell on their toe, and their toe still bruising after that ball falling right on their foot. Yeah, well. Um, the original crashes, we're not saying that that didn't get much advertising, that got a whole lot, but they got like 7 million copies, I mean, that's extreme, they have to that, be good games, they get that many copies as well. The game has to draw you in, ladies and gentlemen, that's why sales are very important. It, it makes the company make another sequel, it gives them money. No, money doesn't mean another sequel. They barely, um, Radical barely had enough money to make another sequel, basically. Just because you think they make good games, just because you like their games, they got to make another game. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, I bet you if Radical doesn't, if they see this product is not making enough money for them, I bet you a good, a good hundred bucks they're gonna drop the series. I bet you they will drop it. What do you think about it? Yeah, well, um, there's some games that don't sell well, but they still do um, sequels because um, usually um, they it's so so well enough to get sequels. But yeah, um, it doesn't sell well. Yeah, they'll drop the game, of course. But yeah. It's still, yeah, yeah as a company, like if you're making a product and it's not getting enough, be like you do like you make one game, you like try to get some good decent media support, and it doesn't meet your expectations, you can drop that idea. They can like throw the right to crash out of there or sell it to someone else who's dumb enough to make a game for it. Well, you know, if someone else can make a good crash, you know, I will highly appreciate that, like Traveler's Tales or something. But that's just how I feel. That's what they. So radical, I really feel radical can drop the series anytime they fucking feel like it. I think they really don't give a shit about Crash, and they really don't know what the hell they're doing, and none of them actually cared about Crash. Actually, what the hell they was doing. I really yeah. think. I think. Um, let me just say one more thing. I think radical thinks. I think radical. I really think radical sees Crash as a, as a cash cow more than an icon. What do you think? Yeah. Well, then the other people who pay um, radical to make these games and. A radical just get the amount of money from Vivendi. Vivendi is the ones that really cares about how much money uh, the games really get. And you know, Vivendi is—I bet Vivendi's not happy. This is an icon. Icon is supposed to bring in big bucks. You see, Halo. As much as I hate the game, the game had great media support. 
It was on freaking pop bottles, for God's sakes. Yeah, well, uh, Halo, it's got a lot of support from um, other players as well. Like, it just it just built up as such, like, the, one of the greatest games of all time when, you know, it can be great, it can be not great. You, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, another, let's talk about games that were great but didn't sell well. How about that? Let's go Let's go down the list here. I have a couple. Kanoa, Beyond Good and Evil, Cross Edge, an RPG for the PS3 that's actually very good. Folklore, which is actually very hard to find for the PS3. Um, let's see what else we got here. Man, I know. Oh, yeah, Tomba. You, hey, does anyone here remember Tomba? Hey, but you know what's in common? You know what all those games have in common? Ratchet 5? Yeah. They all didn't get no media support. There was not one single cross-edge commercial. Yeah, well, um, you could say that it's not really their, their, um, it's pretty much their fault because they didn't pay for the advertising, but... Same thing goes for Earthbound, same thing goes for Kanoa, same thing goes for Tomba. I, I know, that we commercial for Kanoa, we made does not count as advertising. That is retarded advertisement. You should see it, man. It's horrible. Yeah, well, we got bad advertising, um, you get <laughs> not very good sales. Yeah. yeah. The advertisements fault there. <laughs> yeah, it's just that that's the reason why now, talking about the game itself, the core gameplay now, first of all, having enough, first of all, the game is just a button masher. I mean, this game really tries so hard to be like Crisis Force, that was actually a good 3D um, beat em up. Like, you know, it's trying to be like, uh,. You know, try to be like that Streets of Rage and everything. You know, this is really like a heavy... The game is very buddy matching heavy. It's not really crash. Now, I'm all for new things. But, to tell you, this really isn't fitting... The, it's not really fitting the bill. It's not really crash, in my opinion. Yeah, well, um, it's just that some people will say that uh, platformers aren't really in these days. And people rather go for the button mashes because they're funner. Do you agree? Uh, depends. Honestly, depends. Like, like I don't know. So, some recent kids these days. Um, um, that's just really stupid. You want to play a real button match? Play some of the really good Dynasty Warrior games. Like, I, there are a couple of good ones. Um, the Samurai Warriors ones. Uh, God Hands. I better beat 'em up in that game. You see, to, to make a good beat 'em up, you gotta have variety. That game doesn't have no variety. It's just mash X and Y all day. God Hand has all these freaking powers you can do. You, you heard of God Hand, right? Yeah, uh, no, actually, um, I haven't. <laughs> it's from Capcom. It's a very awesome game. You know, it makes a lot of references. It's very funny. You see, God Hand is an example of a good beat em up. It's what, it's what, if they want to do beat em up, that's how you should do it, basically. But not like, you know, have Crash have a glowing arm or something, but have it to where there's a lot of variety in his moves. And so, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Yeah, well, it's not a very good beat em up game at all, uh, full stop. Um, yeah, do you think that. If Crash was still a platformer, would it sell well? Yeah, because, you know, it's originality. You know, people are enjoying Mega Man 9. Even I want to play that shit. And it's just that this game, we're going to put this in. We're not going to bash you. We respect your opinions. But understand yeah. our sales do really matter. And I really, um, scratching my head at some of the comments that we got on the last bit. You know, it was really ridiculous that y'all say sales mean nothing and all that. Okay, what is that to you? Is that really being a, is that being a fanboy to you? And lacking an understanding of the gaming company, the gaming business. Retrify, you there? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. What what is that to you? Honestly, what is that to you? Uh, what is what to me? Sorry. What is this? Like, oh, sales mean nothing. Like they don't they don't really play a oh. key part into the game and all that. They do really actually. Yeah, well, sales mean a lot of things. Um, it's not just media support. If uh, you play the friend, uh, if you play the game that your friend has, um, obviously you'll buy it too. If you've heard it's good, uh, you'll buy it too from reviewers. And yeah, I know some of you guys think that reviewers they don't mean crap because it's personal opinions. But these reviewers, they're pro professional gamers. They know gaming a lot um, better than most people. Yeah, and like sometimes they get it right. Some it's very, it's very, it's rarely, but they do get it right sometimes. Yeah, well, sometimes the reviews are kind of over the place, like the Eternal Night review. Um, one le review of Legend of Eternal Night gave it a 3.5, which is kind of over the place. But, like, most of the time they're around the same point, and so you know that that's whether it's going to be good or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, like some of them just hit the, not only hit the nail on the head, so, but some of them just get way off, like the Sonic Unleashed reviews. Like, all the Sonic Release reviews were pretty, very biased and everything, you know? Yeah, well, uh... 
Actually, I haven't played any of the new Sonic games, so... I can't uh, but hey, that's off topic, you know. And yeah. um, pretty much to wrap it up, Crash needs to get better, and if not, he's going to die very, very quickly. Yeah, and um, that's why we pretty much made the rant today, so that maybe some of you will take notice and want to get more platformer Crash games back. Um, like there's something that makes it playable, something that draws in people. Pla mix it up a bit, you know, not to keep it the same thing. We're not saying to add, keep it the same thing, but mix it up a bit, you know, voila, bodus, what us I, something like that. Yeah, well, it, if they kept it the same way that they did in Crash 2 and 3, I know it's like some people, they say it wouldn't work. Um, in Rafa Cortex, that wasn't a good example because in, in some ways it was shitter than Crash 3, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, but that's pretty much all we have to say. Radical, you need to get better if you really want Crash to bring in the fucking money. Any last words for you? Yeah, um, Radical, you need to get better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>